Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So as I am sure a lot of you know, documentary filmmaker and raging leftist Michael Moore has released his latest documentary, Planet of the Humans. Now to be clear, unlike Bowling for Columbine, Fahrenheit 9-11, etc., Michael Moore does not take a front and center role on screen for this one. He is the executive producer and as such has lent his name and brand to the film, even making it available for free on his YouTube channel. Instead, the film's centerpiece is environmental activist Jeff Gibbs, a tree hugger from way back when, who has been collaborating with Michael Moore on his various documentaries for years. And far from the relentlessly pro-green energy dogma we have become accustomed to from celebrities and the media over the past couple of years, Planet of the Humans is a harsh proverbial skewering of renewable energy and the kind of green profiteering industry its main proponents have created. Solar and wind energy billed as the salvation of people kind by the likes of Greta Thunberg, Prince Harry and of course the Extinction Rebellion crowd cop a major clobbering from Gibbs. Biomass also takes a beating that is chopping down trees and burning their wood chips for energy in lieu of coal. How anyone could ever think that chopping down trees and burning them for energy was an environmentally friendly idea, I don't know, but you know, whatever. Like, you know, whatever. The documentary also takes aim at high-profile environmental activists such as Bill McKibben of 350.org, Al Gore, Michael Bloomberg, Richard Branson, and of course the notorious Koch brothers. Gibbs accuses them of everything from being disingenuous in their advocacy of green energy like biomass to hijacking the green energy movement movement to turn a profit. It's really not the sort of thing you would expect from a Michael Moore affiliated project, to say the least. Now this documentary was billed as groundbreaking, controversial, shocking, a real deconstruction of our sacred cows, etc, etc. However, when I watched it, I quickly realized it was anything but. The information relayed by Gibbs was, for lack of a better term, eerily familiar. By which I mean it pretty much mirrored everything conservatives have been saying about renewable energy for years. Minus the raging anti-capitalist narrative, of course. That is, legitimate factual criticisms such as the fact solar and wind are intermittent and have issues with efficiency, since of course the sun doesn't always shine and the wind doesn't always blow, and as such they need some sort of fossil fuel backup. Or, like the fact that while solar and wind are billed by activists as the clean, green, perfect solution to all of humankind's climate problems, the process of making wind farms and solar panels is anything but. They both require fossil fuels to power the gear that manufactures them initially. And in the case of solar panels, they're made of materials like quartz and even coal, which need to be mined. Also in the case of wind farms, large sections of land must be cleared, which is most certainly not environmentally friendly. And also they kill millions of birds every year. More things the documentary exposed, even though the right has been saying it like forever, is that in the case of electric cars, while they may not spew out any emissions, they have to be charged up at electric power stations that are connected to the grid, which is of course powered by fossil fuels. It also revealed that green energy has been hijacked by some of the greatest profiteers on the planet, such as, I mentioned before, Richard Branson, Michael Bloomberg, and Al Gore, who have turned the green movement into a money-making exercise, despite all their talk of, you know, environmentalism. Excellent. Anyway, the reaction from far-left climate activists has been just beautiful to watch. I mean, you know how much I love watching the regressive left eat itself. In fact, I think this hysteria is actually worse than whenever right-wing people criticize renewable energy because this time the activists can't just fob it off as right-wing talking points. It is the brainchild of Michael Moore and Jeff Gibbs, for heaven's sake, two of the most ragingly left-wing environmentalist people you will ever meet. And you know how social justice warriors feel about leftists who don't toe the party line. You are all hereby found guilty of the crime of witchcraft. I sentence you hags to be burned at the stake until you are deemed fit to re-enter society. Fire it up, boys. In fact, these left-wing environmentalists were so panicked by the documentary that they have said it is flat-out dangerous and they legitimately tried and in fact succeeded for about half a day until it went back up again in getting one of the film's distributors, Films for Action, to actually ban it from their website. 
Climate activist Josh Fox wrote a pleading letter to Films for Action for the film to be taken down for allegedly spreading misinformation, co-signed by a number of high-profile climate activists slash renewable energy enthusiasts. He also demanded a personal apology from Michael Moore, although as far as I know, Michael Moore has not complied. Now, Josh Fox announced all of this in a panicked, depressing Twitter thread, explaining the situation and decrying the film's existence. I am not going to read you the whole thread, but I think this tweet pretty much sums up his and others' attitudes to the whole thing. I will add here, with deep regret and sadness, that my hero has fallen. I have watched Michael Moore punch up at authority and hypocrisy with glee for his whole career. He has deeply inspired me and taught me, but now he's the Goliath in the room, punching down at us. Okay, so it has to be said here, if Josh Fox really believes that criticizing renewable energy and those who endorse it is punching down, then he's either delusional or has been asleep for the past year. Has he not witnessed the massive support the extremist green movement has received in the media and in popular culture? Has he not heard of Greta Thunberg and her school strike for climate change? Has he not witnessed the terrible smearing of people who offer even a centrist viewpoint on climate change, let alone skepticism? I mean, really, what victim planet do these people live on? <laughs> but I digress. Here's the interesting part about all of this. There are actually some very legitimate critiques to make of Planet of the Humans in terms of its representation of climate activist Bill McKibben and others, and also in terms of its factual accuracy. Now, I am not going to subject you all to a full-on scientific analysis of what people think the film got wrong, but in very rudimentary terms, the general consensus from the film's critics is that the picture Jeff Gibbs paints of solar and wind power would have been accurate circa 2012. Now, this doesn't surprise me at all, since Jeff Gibbs was reported to be making this documentary as far back as then and has long had gripes about green energy. According to critics, many of the issues Gibbs raises as problems or gotcha moments about solar and wind farms have largely been remedied over the past decade or, at the very least, acknowledged and in the works to be, you know, fixed. They have also said that while it is true that wind farms and solar panels require fossil fuels and some very environmentally unfriendly manufacturing processes, it's inaccurate to say that we might as well just burn fossil fuels for energy, which is what the film asserts. According to these critics, solar panels and wind turbines very quickly offset the carbon footprint required to make them, since they don't produce emissions while generating power, obviously. I have put the links to a number of these reviews and critiques of the film in the video description and I really would encourage you to read them because they explain all of this much, much better than I can and they are, in all seriousness, very interesting and generally quite logical. Well, mostly logical. One critic, climate activist Keaton Josh, he managed to slip this little bit of desperate ideology into an otherwise informative critique. The film features a parade of solely white Americans, mostly male, insisting the planet has to reduce its population. There is no information provided on which people in the world need to stop having children, but we can take a guess based on the demographics of the people doing the asking. I mean, they just can't help themselves, can they? However, even though there appear to be quite blatant inaccuracies and misrepresentations of fact in the documentary, screaming that it should be banned and demanding an apology be issued and lamenting that your idol has fallen is a very disproportionate reaction, especially when opponents of the film have the facility and the platform to critique it, which they have, comprehensively. As such, the fact that the knee-jerk reaction of climate activists was to have a virtual freakout, declare the film not just wrong but dangerous, and petition to have it banned proves three things. One, that these people are so used to having their way in the media and in the pop culture arena that they've forgotten what it's like to have to publicly defend their ideas, which is making them all sorts of anxious. Two, they are so, so sure that what they say and believe is so entirely true and correct, not just about the science of the thing, but about the perceived morality of their climate quest, that they believe that nobody should ever be allowed to have an opposing opinion ever, because that's just not appropriate. 
Which brings me to three. Despite the apparent problems with some of the film's messaging, it still raises some very legitimate points about green energy. Green energy still has efficiency and intermittency problems. I mean, less so than 10 years ago, but those problems are still there. It has been taken over by a bunch of corporate giants. It does need fossil fuel backup, and battery storage is still nowhere near perfect. And most important of all, Wind and solar as is simply cannot power the planet and allow us to maintain our current way of life. It is just not powerful enough. And that's what I think the film gets right. Green energy has been billed by activists as the fail-safe solution to global warming that will allow us to power our monumentally electricity-dependent lives in an emissions-free way with little to no changes to our lifestyle. That's why the messaging from Extinction Rebellion activists et al. has been that the whole system has to change rather than, you know, focusing on individual carbon footprints. Anyone who has dared to criticize any of these notions has been smeared as a heartless ignoramus who is happy to let people die. But it's simply not true. Wind and solar can't actually replace fossil fuels while still allowing humans to maintain the way of life we have now. The only way humanity can rely on renewable energy is if we scale down the way we live to a much more basic, sustainable, pre-industrial, environmentally friendly lifestyle. That's actually one of the things I really liked about Planet of the Humans. It's emphasis on carbon footprints rather than smashing down the proverbial system. Although there was some, as I mentioned, pretty hardcore anti-capitalist propaganda in there, but look, what do you expect from a film that has anything to do with Michael Moore or the Green Movement, am I right? Understandably, the critics of Planet of the Humans, those proponents of wind and solar, do not want the general public to hear the many valid points the film makes. That's why they've been so completely panic-stricken in their response, asking for it to be removed from one distributed website, calling it dangerous, blah, 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 blah. And you also have to bear in mind here that a lot of the people who are massively into renewable energy and screaming about tearing down the capitalist system and interweaving terms like climate justice into their commentary are generally of the same school of thought as Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, that is, socialists, who think they can finally create the socialist utopia they have been dreaming of by piggybacking it on climate change policy. And that's not a conspiracy theory, by the way. Groups like the Democratic Socialists of America have admitted that in their commentary. That's what the Green New Deal was all about. It's less about the environment and more about affirmative action and government control. They don't want this opportunity for socialism to be squandered because they may not ever get another one. So, in conclusion, Watch Planet of the Humans. It is available for free on Michael Moore's YouTube channel, and I honestly really did enjoy it. And after that, please read some of the criticism of it, and then just make up your own mind. Also, please keep the climate alarmists who are oh so wounded that Michael Moore hasn't towed the party line in your thoughts. By the looks of it, they're really hurting right now. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me.